Hey, y'all. Hi. Hello, my wonderful, sweet, patient, smart subscribers and new people. If you happen to have clicked on this video without ever watching one of my videos before, hello to you too. I'm sure you're all of those things too. I am so happy to be face to face with you. I've spent like weeks filming overhead for the declutter series and only just this week I'm getting back to filming this kind of video. But a little bit of a slow roll, but I'm feeling like I'm in my groove today. And this is like a classic, fun, sort of low stakes video. And I think that's also part of why I have good energy around it. I'm just gonna be trying new makeup. And because it's been a while, I've kind of like accrued more new makeup than I can try in one video. We're gonna have some decisions to make. Weirdly, a lot of it is Chantecaille. I've gotten like a little bit of PR from Chantecaille from time to time over the years. And then recently, unexpectedly more. But there's some from Kaleidos, this newish brand called Gen C, a mascara from Exa, that I've never tried, a brand I really like, but a product that I've never tried. Besame Cosmetics. Remember good old Besame Cosmetics? It reminds me of old school YouTube. They sent me a couple of pieces to try. So it's gonna be a journey and there will also be the fun of like deciding among these products because I have like a bunch of lip products. I can't try them all on, uh, but we'll be like deciding which ones to try. Probably more swatching than we usually get in a trying new makeup video. I'm looking forward to spending this time with you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe. I make beauty content, but I try to stay grounded in like a realistic point of view. I don't want to promote overspending. And I just realized I forgot all of my brushes. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go upstairs and get my brushes. And when I get back, we'll get into the meat of the video. Okay, I'm back. As you may be able to tell, I'm already wearing some makeup on my face because, well, I was gonna say because there isn't any base makeup in the new makeup box, but that's not true. Shantikai sent me the Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation, which I think is kind of a cult product. I remember there being a lot of hullabaloo around this when it released. I did kind of mess with it when it first arrived. I put it on my face a little bit just to feel the texture. And I understand why people are into it because it is like the creme de la creme of tinted moisturizers, like a very refined, high-end, nourishing, expensive feeling tinted moisturizer. But there are a lot of reasons why I'm not putting this on my face as part of this video. One is that I don't really like tinted moisturizers. I feel like I need more coverage than they can give. I don't like it when there's a product that feels like it's pigment mixed into a lotion because I have quite dry skin. I need a lot of moisture. So when I sit down to put on makeup, I usually have a lot of skincare on my face already, like a lot of moisture pushed into my skin. And it's funny, but a really lotion-y makeup product doesn't always like sit well on top of that or play well with that. But a tinted moisturizer in and of itself doesn't give me enough moisture to moisturize my skin. And then usually it doesn't give me enough coverage, because it's tinted, to really cancel out the redness, really even out my skin tone, which is what I need. But the other issue with this is that the shade doesn't work for me. This is the lightest shade and it, it's that like peach color that the lightest shade and shade ranges sometimes is. Maybe if I swatch it here, you'll be able to get a better sense of why it's not a color for me. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to swatch it next to something that is a good color for me. So here is the Ket Cream Fix Balm Foundation in the lightest shade in the olive section of their shade range. That's on top and the Chantecaille is underneath that big swatch on my middle finger. So you can see how the Ket has this like extremely neutral kind of grayish green undertone, which is what my skin has. And compared to that, the Chantecaille is just more saturated, more saturated with color. There's the one that matches me. That's the Ket Cream Fix. And above it, there is a Chantecaille. When I put something that on my face, it just darkens my face. You know what I mean? It makes my face look like this dark peach thing, which is annoyingly what it often looks like when I wake up in the morning because I have redness, so it's really my pet peeve. If there's a shade for you, though, and sort of a skin refining, moisture adding, lightly pigmented, high-end product is what you're after, I could totally see why this Chantecaille product would be a good fit and is many people's holy grail. I really get it. Future skin. But it's a non-starter for me. I'm gonna give it away. I think I might try to give it away to my mom. Even though she doesn't really wear much makeup, I feel like this is the kind of thing she might experiment with and enjoy.
So what do I have on my face? It's actually a whole host of things, starting with Yves Saint Laurent New Balm, which I wanted to actually bring up on camera because it was completely lost during my declutter. And some of you incisive people were like in the comments, where is the YSL New Balm in my complexion product declutter? It hasn't gone anywhere. I haven't stopped using it. It was accidentally mixed into the box of new makeup to try, which is like sitting off to the side on my vanity. And when it came time to declutter, I both couldn't find it and I also forgot about it. I wasn't there like there's so much going on I just like didn't remember that it is another sort of hybrid skincare priming product that I'm holding on to that I really love using. So I pulled it out to use it today partly because I love it and also because I wanted to make sure to update you about the fact that this is still in my collection. My skin is on the struggle bus right now or like I'm on the struggle bus with my skin. I still haven't quite figured out. It keeps getting colder and it keeps getting drier and I just just haven't quite figured out how to handle this climate skincare wise. So I'm dealing with a lot of dry skin and then sort of this flakiness, some hormonal blemishes making it even harder because I'm trying to treat them and then the treatment like dries out my skin. I'll try to exfoliate away the flakiness and then that will sort of dry out my skin and it feels like there's nothing I can do to moisturize it enough to really make it plump and dewy again. Or it'll get there for a couple of days and then it'll descend back into this like slightly crusty battlefield. So, you know, it's fine. Into every life some rain must fall. But what I'm finding is that because of the way my skin is right now in this season, I feel like I need coverage. In fact, in terms of making my skin really even and evening out the redness and covering the blemishes and the blotchiness from that dryness and sensitivity, I look at my face in the morning and I'm like, oh, I really need base makeup. Like, whoa. But then I go to put it on and it feels like if I put anything more than sort of the littlest, thinnest layer, it makes it look worse because that dryness, it just doesn't take makeup very well. So I'm kind of having to choose between coverage and texture, like acceptable texture, in order for me to not feel like my skin's looking just like really crusty and laden with makeup. I'm having to go for less coverage and less of an even tone than is usually ideal, but that's the option that I'm choosing because I'd rather you be able to kind of see some of the blemishes and scarring through my makeup and like have my skin look very real and pretty uneven. I would rather have it be that than have it look like completely crusty crusted over and caked with makeup on top of dry skin. I just can't stand that. So in order to accomplish like as much coverage as I could give myself without going overboard today, I massaged quite a bit of the new balm into my skin. I then went in with the Exa Green Color Corrector and massaged some of it into my skin with my hands instead of a brush because I find that when my skin's really, really dry, that works better. I then went in with uh, a half pump of the House Labs Triclone Foundation, just the white pure, and I massaged that into my skin skin and that all helped kind of like lighten the tone but without putting any makeup onto my skin that like gripped to the flakes you know what I mean like gripped to the dryness because it was all feeling like skincare really. Then I used the Cat Cream Fix on a brush and I just tapped it like on my chin and on my cheekbones and under my eyes and just just places where I needed to tap it to kind of brighten the face and make it look a little bit more even but without really applying coverage and then I spot concealed a little bit with the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer so that's what I'm bringing to you now, just so you know. And I think that that's everything that's on my face. A little bit of powder, the Kosas powder, just a little bit, and that's everything that's on my face. So should we start trying actual new actual makeup, the actual topic of the video? Should we start? After 15 minutes, I've been sitting here filming for 15 minutes, should we actually start? Okay, I have a couple of choices for eye makeup. Actually, you know what I'm gonna start with? Brows. I really wanna get these brows together. I only have one thing for brows, and it's something I'm excited to share with you. I think I have used this on camera once before. It's the Gen C Brow Pomade in Medium Brown. This is just like that old CoverGirl one that I loved, and I think that has been discontinued. It's like a fiber-building brow gel, with pigment. So the thing that I've realized is that you have to be really careful not to let the bristles of this teeny tiny brush touch the skin because then it just like gets a ton of dark pigment on the skin. I just go through and gently brush it through the tips of the hairs of my brows and it like builds fiber and a little bit of depth of color onto them. Now that I'm talking about this, I remember that I absolutely have talked about this and shown it on camera before, so I won't make too much of a meal out of it. But I am gonna put it in my brows, which currently have nothing in them. 
So it's in this brow, but not this one. So a little bit of hold, a little bit of color, a little bit of structure, uh, a little bit of fill. You know what I mean? Like a little bit of color fill, but very natural. And the only risk we run is the risk of accidentally letting the bristles touch the skin, which is kind of an unmitigated disaster when it happens, to be completely honest. One of the things I like about this is that you can't really fight the natural shape of your brows with it. You can only enhance it, but because it's building fiber on and making them look like a little bit more wild, the natural unevenness of the two brows sort of matters less with the result that you get from it. I just like that because I feel like sometimes when I'm going with a pencil and I'm like drawing and filling in and really making a shape, I'm fighting the natural shape of my brows, like trying to reshape them into something else. And sometimes I get myself into trouble that way. Sometimes it can look really great. But one of the things I appreciate about this is that it like decides it for you, you know? So that's what we've ended up with for brows. And I'm going to put some quick eye makeup on. Let me tell you. Well, I have a couple of choices. So this brand Floresis sent me a couple of products and one of them is this eyeshadow palette. This is very much the vibe of the brand and just really, really, really pretty engraving, pretty colors, a very unusual, elaborate presentation for eyeshadow. And the pigment is actually kind of there. I'm sort of having deja vu now swatching this. Either I've talked about another Floresis palette before or I've actually swatched this one before on camera. Or maybe I just did it at home. I swatched the blue because it's one of the most interesting ones, but these two are the ones that really intrigue me. Like that shine, you know I love a wet look shine. You know I love a truly neutral brown that has a little bit of dimension. And there's the blue just for good measure. It really reminds me of that topper in the Natasha Denona gold palette that I just decluttered. I actually have tested this palette a little bit and it performs really well. It's good makeup. And you know, if this is what you're into, if like this aesthetic is gonna really, really like make you feel amazing about your makeup collection and make you enjoy putting it on your eyes every morning, I feel like you kind of can't go wrong with this brand. It's out there on social media like ZC. They both have a lot of like engraved and etched and pressed and molded makeup that's very eye catching and I think that a lot of people are like, but is the makeup good, you know? And in my experience with both ZC and Floresis, yeah, the makeup is pretty good and some of it actually really quite good, but it's hard for me to commit to just using that palette today because <laughs> look what Chantikai sent to me. If you've been around, if you're like an OG viewer, then you remember when these first released, it must have been in a new makeup hot takes or like an anti-haul or something. It wasn't just that I'd seen that these had been released, it's that I had seen Mariah Leonard using them and everything about what she said and the look that she did made me lust after them. Wildly expensive single eyeshadows and kind of like a gel to powder formula in these beautiful colors that I love. So this is the giraffe. I mean, just look at the surface of the pan, how it's glossy. Oh no, that was the elephant. That's the elephant. This is the giraffe. The elephant right here and the giraffe right here. I mean... They are kind of everything that I dreamed. Past Tana would scream if she knew that these were eventually going to come as PR samples for review. But you know, current Hannah is just kind of tickled. So what does that tell you about the way that that burning intense passion over something, that need to own something changes over time? It's like by the time I actually get it in my hands, I can assess it a little bit more objectively as just really pretty eyeshadow in a world full of really pretty eyeshadow. Whereas at the time it felt like it was like magic dust that was gonna change my life and transform my face and literally turn me into Mariah Leonard. But I am no longer under the subconscious illusion that that's possible. And I can't even remember which one I was obsessed with. I feel like it was the giraffe because it's the more brown. But swatching them just now, the elephant really intrigued me. Or maybe it was one of the other ones. Maybe it wasn't even one of these. I think I'm going to use the elephant today. Maybe I'll put a little bit of the fluorescent shadow in the mix. So I'm going in with this targeted fluffy brush, the Refer 14, into the luminescent eye shade in Elephant Shimmering Taupe Gray. Full disclosure, I've used the giraffe one a lot because it's just classic, right? It's like the powder version of Tom Ford Naked Bronze, which I think has been discontinued. Somebody said that to me and I was horrified in a comment, I mean, and I clicked through and I think it has been discontinued. And I had a moment where I was like, should I try to buy a backup? And then I was just like, no, all things must perish from under the sun and it's okay. And there's still plenty left in the one that I have, but I can't believe that the day has finally come. And it's good to know that this Chantikai giraffe kind of serves the same purpose 
purpose, except, you know, it's just a, more in a powder format instead of a cream. But I haven't tested this one yet, the Elephant. It's interesting, having recently reviewed uh, the YSL version of this same thing, the little sequin mono eyeshadow from YSL called Explosive Brown. I was so disappointed in the texture of that because it's like really grainy feeling. And then the micro shimmers weren't even really shiny in it. This is like the successful version of a thing like that because it has this really soft, lovely, glossy gel to powder quality on the finger and on the brush. And then the micro shimmers, they're just more present when it's buffed out, especially when it's built up. It's subtle, you know, it's not super shimmery or super glossy, but it has this like dimensional satin quality. YSL looks explosive brown could never. It feels much more, I mean, you know, whether something is worth its very high price tag or a luxury thing is worth its high price tag, it's completely relative to what kind of disposable income you have and like what you want to be spending on makeup and what you can afford to be spending on makeup. So one person can never tell another person if something is worth it, you know? It depends on each person's specific circumstance. But if it is in your budget, in your lifestyle to be spending this amount on a single eyeshadow, this one feels to me much more worth the money. Like it's it's commanding its price tag more rationally than the YSL, like by a long shot, a million times over. You know what I mean? And I'm enjoying this color and the way that it's building up so much that I actually don't think I want to add the Florisys palette or anything else to this. It's interesting, it's gray, but it's got a little warmth, like a warm taupey gray rather than a cold gray, which I think makes it a lot more versatile and definitely makes it work better for me. Adding it to the lower lash line with the Refer 02. I have sort of shied away from putting extremely reflective metallic eyeshadow on my lower lash line over the past several years because I have more creases there. As my eyes have aged, they've gotten a little bit more creased underneath there. And I do like to buff the shadow out kind of far down because I like the drama. And I've realized over the past maybe three to five years that if I put something highly reflective, like really truly wet looking down there, then it will enhance the, that texture. But this, because it's sort of like a matte powdery, sort of like gel powder base with some reflective sparkle in it and it has more of a satin quality with reflect than like a wet look, creamy metallic quality. It's actually fine for buffing out. It, it simultaneously gives a little bit of shine and helps to blur texture, you know? I mean, Chantikai really knows their demographic. So yeah, I'm really here for this. It is kind of everything I dreamed and more, apart from the dream of turning into Mariah Leonard, <laughs> you know? It is just eyeshadow at the end of the day. It's just eyeshadow. But as far as eyeshadow goes, it has delivered on the promises. And I'm very grateful to have these little guys. Mmm a simple mono shadow eye look. Who is she? Let's test the Exa mascara. I have almost completely panned my Exa green color corrector. It's almost used up. And you know, mascara, this was PR, by the way. The green color corrector wasn't. I bought that for actually a dedicated brand review of Exa, and it ended up being a staple product for me. You know, mascara on its first go, like this is the first time I've opened it, doesn't always deliver. So we take this with a grain of salt. I'll of us because you can't really tell until you've used it some several times. Also, my lashes, I feel like lashes go through phases. Sometimes they're really thick and robust and sometimes they're a little thinner. Going through a little bit of a thin lash moment right now. First impressions, it's good that we're taking it with a grain of salt because it's just a little bit, it's a little hard to tell what's going on. It has this sort of funny nipple shaped, and I mean like the nipple of a baby's bottle shaped brush. Like it's, it, it goes narrower than its base and then it puffs out and then it comes to a point at the tip. I'm not totally sure what they're trying to accomplish with that. I get the point at the tip, right? That I, I get a barrel wand that comes to a point that makes sense it's like you use the tip for detail work but the fact that it has this like small area down here and then the big area it's I can't tell which part of that I'm supposed to be putting on like I think I'm supposed to be using just the bump the bump out on my lashes but then what's the whole rest of the brush doing there and when I try to get the part that goes in onto my lashes it's a little awkward like I just don't know why they did that I don't know why it's not all the same width and then comes to a point because if you try to kind of cradle your lash 
crashes with the part that goes in, the sticky outy bump aggressively makes contact with some of the lashes. Okay, though, we're 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 into Spider Town already on the second coat, which I love. Whoa, oh my goodness. I felt like it was sort of a lackluster showing out of the gate on the first coat, but look what is happening now. Look what is happening now. This is what we call buildable. This is what we call fibrous. It's doing that thing where it like balls up on the tip of the lashes. If you're looking for a wispy lash, you're not gonna like that because it's like making the individual lashes sort of fuzzy. But I like that. I like the weird textured drama of that. It reminds me of those old Gucci mascara commercials or, you know, advertising, bits of advertising imagery. Wow, I have never experienced such a dramatic about face between the first and second coat of a mascara as I did with this. I think if you go in with a lot on the brush, it has a lot of potential for thickening. I'm literally like Tammy Faye up in here. I am a drag queen. I mean, just on the eyelashes and in my heart. But isn't that what really matters? Isn't that what makes a drag queen? The eyelashes and the heart. Okay, I have to stop before actual spiders leap from my eyelashes and go crawling away. I'm going to put a little bit of it on the lower lashes. Oh my goodness. I haven't put anything on my waterline, um, and it, I feel like it, even though I usually prefer to have a little eyeliner there, I feel like it's kind of working with this look. It's helping it from getting too heavy, given everything that just happened, <laughs> everything that just went down. Wow, trying new makeup is always an adventure. I always tell myself I'm gonna rein it in and do like a really natural everyday look, and then there's always something that goes off the rails. But you know, I'm not displeased with this, not at all. I actually like the balance between simplicity and drama on the eyes with that eyeshadow and the mascara look. Okay, let us move on. And it's really decisions, decisions. Like this is the moment when I need to, oh, but you know, let me share with you this Besame powder. As ever, the packaging with Besame is really special, vintage inspired. They also sent this lipstick and I'm not sure I'm gonna wear it today because there are a lot of lip products vying for position, but it's really beautiful. I think it's, yeah, the shade name is Chocolate Kiss. Yes. Oh my gosh, look at that. The pigment, the finish, the color. It smells really good too. So yeah, I mean, so pretty, so evocative. And I've worn the lipstick a little bit. The powder is the one that I've really gotten use out of. And as I said before, I powdered a little bit with that Kosas powder, my go-to. The really interesting thing about this is that it is like a setting powder, but it's got just a little bit of a glow, like not a glossy glow, just an interesting combination of matte and I'm adding a little more now because I cleaned up some fallout on my eyes. I think you can see it there. Do you see that sort of slight shine on the skin right there? I just think it's so pretty. It's like it's been powdered so the skin looks more refined, like the texture has been taken down and yet it has a slight glow. And I was very curious about this product. I couldn't quite tell from the description what it was for. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed using it every single time. And maybe that will narrow the options when it comes to blush because I don't think I want to put a cream blush on top of that. I have have this clean sheen lip and cheek color from Gen C. I mean, it's actually really pretty, but I'm gonna use powder products. So I have the Kaleidos Contour Trio in light, Kaleidos Symphony Contour Trio, and the Face Illuminator, which I can't tell if this is actually, oh, oh, it looks like one of those very subtle, kind of like the Besame product. It looks like one of those very subtle, like it highlights with, with brightening, not with shine, you know, or maybe with just a tiny bit of shine. Okay, here's what's happening. I'm gonna try to contour. Kaleido, there is a full range of this. I just have the lightest end of the shade range. So um, I think that they actually offered pretty robust variety of shades. This is the, they also sent me the brush. I'm gonna start with the light side. I'm remembering what Kaki told me to do when she was instructing me to contour in that video. I'm gonna put this like on the high points above the brow. It just feels like a finish powder, refining powder, a little bit on the chin. I can't tell if that did anything. Okay, now I'm gonna take, and I'm terrified, the cool toned one from the middle. I'm tapping the brush off. I'm worried it's gonna look like dirt on my face. See, doesn't it look like dirt? Did I do it wrong or did it snatch me? I think part of the issue is I have all this scarring right here. So when I buff products over it like that, it looks patchy even though it's really just the scarring coming through. All right, I'm going for the other side. We're just doing it. A gentle application under the cheekbones. 
ones. It looks dirty on that side because of my scars. On this side, kind of looks okay. And I'm gonna go under the jawline. I feel like I remember Khaki saying under the nose, maybe under the chin, maybe under the mouth a little bit or back of the jaw. Was that it? I mean, I feel like it did kind of change the shape of my face a little bit. I mean, clearly I don't really know how to contour, but I feel, here's what I'll say. The powder is really, really silky, seamless, finely milled, absolutely beautiful. And I don't feel like I'm struggling with it in any way. I just don't really know if I'm doing this right. Ki it kind of did have an effect. And I feel like my cheekbones, due to a variety of powders, are looking particularly silky. I am gonna spot conceal those blemishes and scars a tiny bit in there. I don't think that disturbed the effect too much. And now that I've gotten used to it, the contour, I actually kind of see the point, which is what happened the last time I tried contouring. Maybe I'll hang on to that Kaleidos thing and play with it a little bit more. But for now, I'm gonna continue to add powder to my cheeks. So the Shantikai Lotus Collection, the Lotus Radiance Blush, which fell out of its pan as soon as I opened it and I had to press back in. So we lost a little bit of the embossing. And the Lotus Radiance Highlighter, which you can see, it has this like three-dimensional, it's like the matrix, but a highlighter. This also looks like a very subtle, I feel like it's subtle highlighting powders to the left of me, subtle highlighting powders to the right of me, but it's fine. I can get behind it. I'm gonna use this BK Beauty brush, the 110, and go into the Chantecai blush, which I haven't actually tried yet. It looks kind of intense, like it looks kind of pigmented. It's actually pretty. I mean, oh, it's not as, it's more of a glossy. Yeah, it doesn't have the rich punch of color that it looks like it would have in the pan. It's more of a glossy thing. I like it. I mean, what can I say? Shantikai makes very high-end makeup. It's like, it's just really pretty. I like it. I'm gonna put this highlighting, I don't understand though. The highlighting powder. Oh, okay. It is kind of highlighting. It just, in the pan, it doesn't look very shiny, but again, it's like a subtle powder that I actually, no, it looks like it has a little bit of a pink sheen. I like that too, because it, a lot of times, here's my pet peeve for powder highlighters. When they're so metallic, like so packed with metallic shine that they obscure what's underneath them. Like rather than creating a shiny veil over what's underneath them, with the, which this totally did. <laughs> like I'm actually a little bit shook by how much I like that. The effect of that highlighter, the wash of highlighter on top of the blush. It doesn't create like a metallic stripe on the darker blush underneath that makes it look like there's a bunch of powders layered on top of each other. It just gave sort of a wash, like a luminous wash that I feel like, you know, I could easily or comfortably brush other places. You know what I mean? If I wanted to like, you know, like light up, make my skin look glossy all over, like a little bit on the cheekbone or on the um, clavicle and the, even the center of the forehead or something that was going for that look could use that. Okay, when I opened these Chantikai products, I felt like they were a little bit milk toast. I was kind of like looking at the pans and they didn't look particularly promising. There's also a powder, which is like the glow blur perfecting powder, but I feel like the highlighter glowed, blurred and glowed. All right, I'm just gonna do it anyway and see what happens. Okay, that's much more matte. It's like a matte glow. Yeah, wow, when it rains powders, it pours powders. Yeah, when I opened them first, it just seemed a little bit like all packaging, maybe no substance. But having tested them now, these Chantikai powders, the Lotus Collection, I'm very excited to keep using them. Okay, all that remains is to decide on a lip color, and there are just so many choices. So Gen C makes a lipstick, the Pick Me Up Lip. I love the cardboard packaging of Gen C. I love the, the colors, and it's like this two-tone packaging, and then it also has mustard. Like, I just like the colors that they chose. And they sent me a bunch of different colors of the lip. This is the the one that I've tested and it's a nice soft matte formula with nice pigment just like really good it's not super innovative you know it's just a really good long wearing comfortable matte lipstick if for some reason you're placing an order from Gen C and you're curious about the lipstick there's nothing wrong with it like it definitely is a good lipstick the thing I'm the most intrigued about is the lip product that came with the Chantikai Lotus collection because it's covered in glitter <laughs> Look at that. Ah, like I can't live my life. And here's the thing, I've saved it for this video. I haven't tried it on yet. So I have to put it on. And then if it's weird, I'll try something else. Because I also have this um this product from Kaja, and I'm not sure if it's a cheek product or a lip product. It's called Whipped Dream. Kaja Whipped Dream. I love this chunky packaging. I thought it was a lip product, but it's not scented. And Kaja, I feel like notoriously heavily scents their lip products. I'm gonna look this 
this up. If it's a cheek, I'll be intrigued by it. And then I also have this ColourPop Luxe Lip Oil in kind of a pretty coral color, but it's gotta be the Chanticleer to start with at least. It's called the Lip Crystal in Pink Opal. Are you ready? Oh my God, it's the 90s. It's the 1990s. I kind of love it. I went on a journey just now and I first put it on, I was like, oh no, it's frosty. It's like the 1990s, which is not not true. Like that remains true, you know? But it's allowing my natural lip color to show through and, and also it's moisturizing my lips in a really comfortable way. And so you can see like the sheen of moisture on my natural lip color, which I think is just helping make the gold reflect a little more modern. And also the fact that the reflect is gold instead of silver, or like frosty white, icy white is helping. I love it. I cannot believe how much I like this. I was fully expecting for it to be sort of like really, really weird. I thought I was going to take it off and use one of the Gen C lipsticks. That's what I was like sort of laying the groundwork to do, to like test this and then not wear it. But I am going to keep it on. I want to wear it. Gosh, Chantecai, I, because it's so ostentatiously expensive, it's just one of those brands, you know, I always kind of want to like undermine that a little bit, like find a reason to take it down a peg. <laughs> like I kind of go in with that goal in mind or with that expectation. And then at the end of the day, it's really good makeup. The problem with it is that it's really expensive and it positions itself, like the brand positions itself in one corner of the makeup market that only a very few people, I think, really actually have comfortable access to. At this point, I've tried a variety of Chantecai makeup. I've been really lucky in that way. And unexpectedly, that is actually my only criticism. Like that has turned out to be my only criticism of the brand. They're doing that, but they're not charlatans in that. Like they're doing that thing where they're just in that one little corner, but they're in that corner actually making really good makeup and actually some good skincare too. Apart from, for me, the future skin, which is a total fail, Chantecai is kind of snuck up on me every single time. And I'm sorry this ended up being such a Chantecai heavy video, but I do think that the Exa mascara was a real surprise and kind of a robust first impression. The Besame makeup, I know I didn't get to apply Chocolate Kiss, but I'll try to wear it soon. It's really a gorgeous lipstick. And even though it terrifies me, the Kaleidos contour kit also works really well. Nothing really let me down in this video. There were some surprises, but it was in the direction of like a pleasant surprise rather than an unpleasant surprise, which is good because I'm going to go on to film another video. And sometimes when I try new makeup, it all goes like terribly wrong and then I cannot proceed to film another video. So I really lucked out in this case. And I hope that it was enjoyable for you to spend this time with me, kind of like a grounding YouTube classic here in the middle of the frenzy of the holiday season. This time of year always feels totally wild on YouTube. So it was good to just sit down and play with makeup and react to makeup and kind of like forget that wildness for a while. Thank you so much for being here. Again, please subscribe if you're not subscribed. And you know, especially in light of what is for many people an extremely chaotic and fast paced time of year, I really hope you're remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. I then just went with a pure squirt of the, I'm not going to say pure squirt on YouTube. We're editing that out. Joe, edit it out.